Today we're going to do another exercise using optic oriented programming. In this episode, we're going to learn how to spit out data from a database. So in my example here, as you guys can see, I have a completely empty website except for the basics of an HTML5 setup. And inside my database, I have a database called OOP Tutorial and I have a table called Users. Now inside the user table, I have an ID, I have a UID and a password of the user. So what I want to do here is I want to spit out this information inside the website so we can actually see the username and the password. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back inside my code editor and I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to go ahead and save this one inside my root folder, inside another folder called includes, because I want to keep all my class files inside an includes folder. Again, it isn't required that you include all your class files inside an includes folder. I'm just doing it because it's easier for me. So inside my includes folder, I'm going to go ahead and save this one as dbh.inc.php. Again, the .inc is just a way for me to know that this is inside the includes folder. You don't have to call it .inc. It does nothing. It's just for naming purposes. Okay. So I'll call it dbh.inc.php. Inside this file, I'm going to go ahead and create a class that has the database connection to my database. So I can actually call on this class whenever I need to create a connection. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have the PHP tags. And inside the PHP tags, we're going to go ahead and create a class. I'm going to call this one dbh and open it up. Now inside the class, the first thing we need to do is add some private properties because we want to have the actual values to our database. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have a private property called server name and close it off. Then I'm going to go ahead and include three more because we need to have the database username, password, and the database name. So I'm going to go ahead and say instead of server name in the second one, we're going to have username. The third one is going to be password. And the last one is going to be DB name. Now you might be asking, why am I making this private? Well, because the database connection is something we don't want the users to get access to, we want to make sure that it's always private. So only methods inside this class here can use these parameters because this class should be the only class that connects to the database. Okay. So after creating these properties, I'm going to go ahead and say we have a protected method called connect. Now you might be asking why am I making this protected? That's because the only time I need to access this is using another class that extends to this class. So we won't actually be doing anything other than connecting to the database using this class. So we need to make sure that other classes can use this database connection inside this class. So when we use protected, I can actually extend other classes to this class and use functions inside this class. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say we have a this that points to server name, which is equal to Let's actually make sure we spell that correctly. Server name that is equal to a string, which will be the actual server name inside my database. Right now I'm using a local host. So I'm going to say local host. I'm going to copy this, paste it down a couple more times like so, and change the names. So I'm going to say username. I'm going to say password and database name. The username is going to be root because that's my database username. Again, you need to change these parameters according to what your database connection is. I'm going to say my password is empty and the database name in my case is OOP tutorial. You guys can create some other kind of database name if you want to. I just decided to call it OOP tutorial. Okay. So after we did this, we need to make sure we actually return the database connection. So we need to create a variable called con which is equal to new my SQLI parentheses semicolon. Now, because we're inside optic run to programming, the MySQLI functions we're using are going to look slightly different. So in the past, it would actually say new MySQLI underscore connect because we were using procedural programming. But because we're using optic run to programming, we're going to go ahead and use MySQLI. Now, you might be asking, well, is MySQLI good for optic run to programming? Well, there's benefits of using MySQLI and there's benefits of using PDO when you want to create database connections and interact with databases using optic-oriented programming. And there's pros and cons of both. 
Now, the reason I'm choosing MySQLi is because that's what we've been doing in my other PHP series I have on procedural programming. So in case new people jump into this series after the PHP series and want to learn object oriented programming, we're going to go ahead and use the same type of database connection as that lesson series. Okay, so you could also use PDO if you wanted to. Now inside this MySQLi function here, this method here, because we're inside Octet into programming, we're going to go ahead and include these parameters. So we're going to say we have this server name as the first one. The second one is going to be this username. The third one is going to be this password. And the last one is going to be this DB name. Okay, then after we did this, we need to actually return variable con. So I'm going to say return variable con, like so. So this is all we need to do inside the dbh file. So now we can actually go ahead and include a second class that actually handles getting user information from a database. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to go ahead and copy what we have inside our dbh.inc.php just to make it easier. I'm going to rename the class as user. I'm going to save it inside my includes folder as user dot ink dot php now i'm going to go ahead and delete the properties in here because we don't actually need them and i'm going to go ahead and change the method name to get all users so now that we did this there's a couple of ways we can do it right now i want to create one class that simply handles all the connections to the database and then afterwards i'm going to go ahead and create a second class called view user that actually shows the user on the website the information based off what we got from the class user. And this is because I don't want to show anything using methods inside the browser with methods that also connects to the database. I want to separate these to make sure that one file or one class only handles connections and a second class only shows the data based off that connection. Okay. This is one way to do it. You don't have to do it this way, but this is one of the concepts that goes behind the MVC model we talked about in the beginning of this series here. Okay. So inside this method here, or actually inside the class, we need to make sure we extend to the database file because right now I can actually get the database connection without extending to the dbh class first. So I'm going to say extends and then say we have a dbh file. After we did this, we can actually go ahead and change the information inside the function or the method here called get all users. So I'm going to go ahead and delete everything inside the method. And I'm going to go ahead and say, well, first of all, we need to actually get the information from the database. So I'm going to say we have an SQL variable, which is equal to double quotes. And inside the double quotes, we want to select all from user. Let's actually make sure we named that correctly. User, not users. And after we did this, we can actually go ahead and run the database connection from the dbh class. Okay. So inside the next line, we're going to go ahead and say we have a variable called result, which is equal to variable this, which means that right now we're pointing to something inside this class. Again, remember, because we're extending to dbh, we now also have access to all the properties and methods in here, as long as they're protected or public, meaning that we could actually get the database connection here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy connect and paste it in right after we point to this class. Then we need to actually query this inside the database and we use another method built in into the PHP object oriented language called query parentheses semicolon. And now we're going to go ahead and include the variable called SQL inside the query here. So now we're basically saying that we want to get this connection and then query the select statement we have up here. Okay. Next line, we need to actually check if we had any kind of results. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called num rows and set it equal to variable result, which we have up here. And then I'm going to go ahead and use a built in method called num rows. Like so, which gives us some kind of number based off how many results we got from the database. On the next line, I'm going to go ahead and say we have an if statement. And inside the if statement, I want to check if num rows is greater than zero. So if we had any kind of results, 
then I want to get the data. Then inside the if statement, I want to actually loop out all the results and put them inside an array so we can return the array inside this function here, inside this method, and pass it on to the class that actually needs to show the data. So we're going to say we have a while loop, parentheses, curly brackets, and inside the condition, we're going to go ahead and say we have a variable called row, which is equal to dollar sign result that points to a method built into the PHP object or into language called fetch underscore asoc parentheses. Then after we did this, we can actually go ahead and go inside the loop and say we have variable data brackets, which means that right now we're saying we have an array called data and we're going to set it equal to dollar sign row meaning that every single result we get from this while loop is going to get inserted into an array called data. Then after we did this, we can go down to the next line and return variable data, which means that now we have an array that we can pass on to the next class. Okay, so all we did here was we essentially said that this method here should only connect to the database and get the data. Then the next class is going to actually handle the data and show it to the user. Okay, so now we're going to create a new file. I'm just going to go ahead and copy everything we did from the previous file, paste it in, save it as viewuser.inc.php. Then I'm going to go ahead and change the name to view user and have it extend to not dbh, but user instead, because we need to actually get the data from user. Okay, let's actually make sure we have this one protected. We do. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and change the method in here called get all users. So instead of get all users, I'm going to go ahead and say we have show all users. Then I'm going to delete everything we have inside the method. And I'm going to go ahead and say we have a variable called datas, which is equal to dollar sign this point to get all users, the method we have inside the previous class, which is in here. This one right here, which means that right now, data is going to be equal to the array that got all the information from the database. Okay, so now the next line we can do it for each loop that actually spits out the data from the array. So we're going to say we have data as the variable. I'm going to go and delete this right here, and I want to spit out a piece of data each time we refer to data, not data. So I'm going to say we have variable data. Going to go and go inside the for each loop and echo variable data brackets because right now we're inside an array. So we can use brackets to refer to which column inside the array or which key we want to actually spit out. So I can say that this one should be the UID. Again, the names for these UID and the next one we're going to do, which is called PWD are the column names you have inside the database. So the keys inside this array is going to be equal to the column names from the database. Okay. Now, just to make sure this looks somewhat nice, I'm going to go ahead and include a break right afterwards. So I'm going to say punctuation, string, and break, and just copy this down to the next one. So now that we have this, we can go inside our index file and down inside the body tag. Well, first of all, we need to make sure we actually include all these files we just created here. So inside the index file at the very top, I'm going to go ahead and open up the PHP tags like so. I'm going to say include space, single quotes, semicolon, and inside the single quotes, we're going to include the database connection first. Of course, we need to make sure we dig inside the includes folder. And the reason we want to get the database connection first is because in order to actually do anything with the user class or the view user class, we need to have the connection first. So the connection is going to be the first file we include. The next file is going to be the user class because we need to actually have the user class before we can use the view user class. Okay, so I'm going to say user.ink.php and then the last one is going to be the view user.ink.php. Inside the body tag, I'm going to go ahead and get these data that we got from the view user class. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have a object called users. Well, we should actually include the PHP tags first. 
like so. Then say we have an object called users, which is equal to new view users, like so. Did we actually call a view user? We did. So let's make sure we don't have an S at the end here. Then afterwards, we can actually go ahead and point to the method inside the view user class. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have users point to a method called, I believe it was called show all users, parentheses. So now if I go inside the browser, you guys can see we get, oh, we get an error message because we forgot to change the actual method inside our view user to public. Remember the public class allow for us to actually go to our index file and pull out data. So this one has to be public. Now, if you go back to the website, you guys can see that we get the users and the passwords. Again, if you wanted to change this, we could go ahead and say that inside the echo, inside our view user has a string that says user name is space. And then whatever is inside the actual data here, then we do another one that says password is, and then spit it out. So you guys can see we now get some text going. So this is how we can spit out data from a database, at least one of the ways we can do it. I hope you guys found this useful and I'll see you guys next time.